Hi everyone, welcome to the next lesson titled Molecular Compounds and Acids. Just take a quick look with me at the top of your notepad page 12 and just do a quick double check with those ternary ionic compounds. I believe in our last video lesson we did not get a chance to fully correct those. I'm going to say their names out loud and ask you to quickly check your work so it matches mine. We had just finished writing ternary ionic compounds, Ca, C2O4, called calcium oxalate, KClO, potassium hypochlorite, KMNO4, potassium permanganate, and lithium sulfite, Li2SO3. That way for sure you know that you've got your answers correct and are ready to start the next new lesson. Molecular compounds followed by acids, a chemical family. Let's begin by talking about binary molecular compounds. Well, I'm familiar with this term binary. Binary clearly means that there are two elements in a compound. And I know every time a binary compound is written, it will end with the ending IDE. What makes it a molecular compound is that we have groups of nonmetals sharing electrons creating a molecular compound. Binary are two elements. Binary ionic, they show us a metal to a nonmetal. Binary molecular show us nonmetal to nonmetal. So the very category of elements create an ionic or a molecular compound. We wrote this note once on our periodic table just to remind ourselves it was the test taking tool. If it's not on your periodic table it might be a very good idea to remind yourself of these definitions. If I have a metal to a nonmetal, I hook by charges. And that's the whole game we've been playing so far in our journey. Ionic compounds are built of ions, something from the left compared to something to the right, a positive to a negative, a cat ion to an an ion. We check to see if they need Roman numerals in their names for those transition metals. Today's next step, the world of molecular compounds, a nonmetal hooked to a nonmetal. Molecular compounds use prefixes in their names. We do not use prefixes for ionic compounds. We do use prefixes in molecular compounds. That is the next step today, nonmetals hooking together. So just items from the right hand side of our periodic table, an N hooked to an O, a C hooked to an S, using prefixes to let us know how many of each there are. Binary compounds come in two categories, ionic or molecular. Binary ionic, metal to nonmetal. Binary molecular, nonmetal hooked to nonmetals. Since they form from different elements, we have a different set of rules for naming them. When we name molecular compounds, we use prefixes. The prefixes we use tell us how many of each atom there are in our formula. For instance, if I wanted to let you know I had just one atom, I would use the prefix one to represent the subscript one. I would use the prefix di to represent the number two if that were my subscript. Tri is the number for the subscript three. Tetra is for four. And penta is the number five. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta for the subscripts one, two, three, four, five, respectively. The subscript six gets a prefix hexa. Seven is the prefix hepta. Octa for the number eight. Nana for the number nine and deca for the number 10. Counting chemistry style. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. When we name binary molecular compounds, remember two nonmetals hooked together, two nonmetals make a molecular compound. The rules for naming these compounds are quite simple. 
we simply say the name of the first element. We say the name of the second element, but it ends in IDE. The last name will end in ID. And we put the appropriate prefix to indicate how many of each element there are in our chemical formula. Using the prefixes we just wrote together to indicate how many of each atom we are. If the prefix for the first element in our binary molecular compound is a 1, if the prefix is a number 1, it may be dropped. I don't have to say mono for the first element. Mono may be dropped for the first element only. but it must be said for the second element. I may drop it for the first, but it has to be there for the second element. A good example of what I'm saying, let's name this molecular compound CO. C stands for carbon, O stands for oxide, Putting on the prefixes, notice it's just the last name that ends with "-ide". The name of the first element, say it just as it is. The name of the last element must end in "-ide". So far, we say the name of the first element, say the name of the second element ending in "-ide". And now we're told, put on the appropriate prefix to indicate how many of each there are in the formula. One carbon, we would say monocarbon, and one oxide, monoxide. What my suggestion is, if the first element is a 1, as in this example, you may leave off the mono from the first name. So instead of saying monocarbon, we can simplify to just say carbon. But if the last one is also a 1, it must be there. This correctly named is monoxide, but we'll lop off the double vowel problem and just simply say monoxide. CO carbon monoxide. Do not reduce the subscripts as we did for binary ionic compounds. Binary ionic compounds must be in the lowest ratio possible. Binary moleculars, leave them alone. Let's practice. We're going to say the names of these binary molecular compounds, just saying their names. The formula of N2O, notice N is a nonmetal, O is a nonmetal, categorizing this binary molecular compound. We simply say the name of the first element, nitrogen, say the name of the second element, ending in ide, oxide, and put on the appropriate prefix. The prefix for two is di, so the first name di nitrogen. The prefix for the number one, that subscript one, it's not written, but we know it's there, is mono. And instead of saying monoxide, we lop off the double vowel to simplify it, monoxide. We've just written a formula, N2O, and named it dinitrogen monoxide. PCL3. Notice the first element is just the number one, so I'm going to choose not to say mono and just simply write its name, phosphorus. Cl ending in ide is chloride, and the prefix for the number three is tri, tri-chloride. Pause the video right now and name the rest of these compounds and when you're ready to check your work, start it up again. Don't cheat yourself of the lesson. Pause the video, work ahead of me, then turn it back on when you're ready to check. All right, welcome back. I bet for letter C, you wrote sulfur, hexa for number six, hexafluoride, sulfur hexafluoride. Letter D, just one oxygen, so I'm going to leave the mono off, oxygen, difluoride. Cl2O8, the prefix di, chlorine, oct, ox, 
side. Lopping off the double vowel sound, dichlorine octoxide. And your letter F, sulfur trioxide. Notice it's only the last name that ends with "-ied". We say the name of the first element just as it is. The last name ends with "-ied", and we place the appropriate prefix onto the elements to tell us how many of each there are. Work ahead of me right now, pausing the video, and turn these names into formulas. When you've got them down, turn it back on and check your work. Letter A says nitrogen trifluoride. Nitrogen symbol is N. The symbol for fluoride is F. And to let you know there's three of them, we simply write NF3, nitrogen trifluoride. Disulfur dichloride. Disulfur dichloride. S2Cl2. Dinitrogen tetraoxide. Dinitrogen tetroxide. N2O4. Oct oxygen dichloride. Oops, there's a typo there. That's an IDE ending. Oct oxygen. That's eight oxygens. Dichloride Cl2. O8 Cl2. Trinitrogen pentoxide. Trinitrogen pentaoxide. N3O5. Binary compounds end with "-ide". Only the last name end with "-ide". Remember, binary compounds can be ionic, no prefixes, or they can be molecular, yes prefixes. Ionic compounds are built of charges. Ionic compounds, we take a positive and negative and crisscross. Molecular compounds are neutral. There are no such thing as charges, so we must use prefixes in the name to tell the reader how many of each there are. Learning to count chemistry style. Let's say them again just to remember them so they begin to stick in our head. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. Friends, the last thing that I'd like you to do is to take these prefixes and find a spot on your periodic table so that come test day, you've got them handy and don't have to worry about forgetting. A test-taking tool, learn to count chemistry style, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, Nana Deca. Complete your periodic table test taking tool area wherever you have a spot. And when you're ready, start up the next video on the lessons for acids.